Uh, I think part of the reason why Gen X uh, is the most conservative of the generations, much more than boomers, much more than millennials, is that we had the most freedom. Mm. We looked to be shocked. We wanted to be offended. We looked, we loved dirty jokes. We loved, you know, music that, you know, I, I don't know if anyone watched the rather bad Woodstock uh, 99 movie that was on HBO. But it really was there, this notion of racism and sexism everywhere was just not a, around. And you, you just had, you know, um, a black artist like DMX was singing these songs and, uh, you know, a million white kids are singing the N-word along with these, with these songs that they love. You know, it, it really, it, it wasn't turned into some sort of like weird victim racist ideology. It was just sort of like about art and free expression and people saying things. It hadn't been redefined into this thing where you can't say this, you can't write this, you have to walk on eggshells. The world has to be childproof and you have to think like the better people or whatever. I didn't experience that. So I think part of the reason why Gen X is, I don't know, 10 to 12 points more conservative in the polls that I've read in the US is precisely because of this reaction against this kind of authoritarian, you know, language, you know, whatever. It's, it's this, that's what white was about. White was not a defense of Trump and white was not an attack on liberalism. I was a liberal, what are you talking about? It just so happens that the culture had moved so far over to this other side that I guess I wasn't anymore. I don't know. So, so, that, you, so that's what White was about. And, and White was written in a very heated moment in 2019. I would never write that book now, but I was asked about it recently, uh, actually yesterday in Amsterdam, about would you write that last chapter again where you're talking about Kanye West. Mm -hmm. Last chapter in White is about working with Kanye West for five years on projects that never happen. Kanye's a bit crazy. He is a, <laughs> he's just a bit crazy. The Kanye now is really no different than the Kanye that I met in 2013. He is the same person. He is outrageous, he's a provocateur. He is going way far on where, on the platform he is now, but I is think- he a, Is he an anti-Semite? I don't believe he's an anti-Semite. No, I do not believe that at all. I believe that he's a destroying artist. And I believe he's at a point in his career, because I've been there too, where you you've can't- never said, You've never said anything as, that could be const as construed as anti-Semitic as he has. I've had a lot of Jewish boyfriends. <laughs> so I- Lucky you. Uh, but look, my Jewish boyfriend and I make anti-Semitic jokes all the time. You know, I mean, come on. What's wrong with an anti-Semitic joke? You know, whatever. But the problem is that with Kanye, he really is, he, he wants to live in a world that is completely free and completely, to, to, not, to not be able to say you liked voting for someone or that you like this and that there's this entire industry that is trying to shut down free speech and label a lot of stuff hate speech that I don't even know if it really is. I think that's what Kanye is reacting to. I don't know really why he wants to die on this particular hill, but I kind of get it, knowing Kanye the way that I did, that he just wants to say fuck you to everybody. I can say whatever the fuck I want, and if I want to say that I like fucking Adolf Hitler, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> my boyfriend's Jewish, and my stepfather is a Jew who lost his family in the Holocaust. I know, I know, saying that is so stupid, and he fought in the, he's, he's fought in the Israeli war and everything. And he just shrugged and said, Khan is a moron, whatever. He didn't turn it into some gigantic tornado of, you know what, of hysteria that the American press liked to do and, and that corporate culture likes to now punish. But I would not rewrite that chapter about Kanye or add that into it because that took place in 2018, that chapter, and it was a reflection of that moment and where we were. And um, I thought it was a pretty accurate portrayal of who Kanye was overall. One of the things that I notice so much about my boyfriend and a lot of other people his age is shame. A huge sense of shame that my generation simply didn't have. I did not care what my parents thought about my books. 
Someone once told me, uh, God, you're going to publish less than zero? They read an early copy. What are, you, what are your parents going to think about this? And it was sort of like nothing. I don't care what my parents think. I'm not writing it for my parents. I didn't even have that thought in my head. Now, this was a very conservative young man who actually went on to become a, a fairly well-known journalist in the United States. We were at college together. Um, but I just did not have... I, I was always writing for myself. And I know that my parents, for example, were not happy with some of my books. I know that my father, I found out later after he died, called Less Than Zero to my mother, that dirty little book that our son wrote. Um, <laughs> and he died six months after American Psycho happened. So I, I don't know. But I don't, and I don't think I write the kind of books that my mother particularly likes. She just doesn't like these kind of books. But she's proud of me, and it's fine. And it wasn't, they weren't written for her. So I think the question is a difference in generation in terms of um, uh, my boyfriend wants to be liked. He wants to be followed. He wants likes on his Instagram. He wants people, he wants a lot of views on his YouTube video. He wants, he's exhibiting himself and he wants to be accepted in ways that just I never did. We never did. So that thought of like, oh, my dad or someone or a teacher reading something I wrote and slamming it would, make no, would, would have made no difference to me. I remember one of the first stories that I turned in at college, um, my professor read it and said, what is all these brand names? Why are you mentioning the songs people are listening to when they're having conversations? Why are you talking about the movie they went to see last night or what's playing on the television set? And my reaction was, well, that's how people are. I mean, that, that's life. I mean, these things are what people are concerned about. And, and it is part of the wallpaper, uh, the background noise of their lives. And he took me to task. And he said, well, you're going to end up on the ash heap of literature. If you keep <laughs> writing books like this, you're going, to, you're going to date yourself out of being you know, important or whatever. And I wasn't even thinking about that. But that didn't matter to me. I really didn't care. So. I think that might be the crucial difference. Wanting to be liked, to be liked, to be liked was just not part of Gen X. It just wasn't. Uh, but I do think it's a major crushing part of uh, my boyfriend's millennial generation and, and perhaps yours. I don't know. Very, uh, It's not a crushing part, but you're much more sensitive about it than I think we were. I, I do think that it, we, were, we were raised in a period where there was all that freedom and that there was all this kind of experimentation going on in the culture that was, um, that was really impactful. And there was also this idea, it wasn't parental neglect exactly, but it was just we were raised in a culture of adults. We were not raised in a culture made for children, which I believe we are now, where everyone's walking away eggshells and asking children, oh, what do you want? Do you want this? Are you okay with this? Is this movie safe for this person or whatever? We live in a kind of child-proof society now that we absolutely did not grow up in as Gen Xers. We grew up in a world that was completely controlled and dominated by adults, which in its own way made us want to be adults, want to enter into the world of sex and careers and all of that stuff and not, you know, hang out for two months in San Diego, what, Comic-Con, cosplaying at 42. <laughs> you know, we, just, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to, and so there was a, we sensed a freedom in that and because we were not, and I hate using this word coddled. I don't think I was ever asked, what do you want for dinner, honey? Do you think you're okay? <laughs> Oh, is this, is this comfortable enough for you? Do we have this? It just didn't happen. So I do think in a way that was part of it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that was the reason why we do cherish a kind of freedom that my younger friends are, are really okay with going with the rules, this ridiculous rule book of things that I just have to reject as, you know, as a member of whatever our generation. It's very different, very different, very different Thank terms, you. yeah. Person behind you. Hi, I'm a millennial. Um, I've read more than one novel, so there's hope in life. 
Um, I've heard this expression that every generation thinks the previous generation is boring, mm -hmm. and the next generation is hopeless. Yes. Um, so my question is, is there anything you like about millennials or Gen Z, or you think humanity is going all the way downhill and there's no turning back? Thanks. Oh, I believe both. I believe both to a degree. Look, my partner of 13 years is a millennial, so obviously there's something I like about him. There's something I like about his personality. There's something I like about his outlook. He's not a typical millennial, though. And he is very critical of his generation. There's a lot of things about it he doesn't like and that he rejects. Um, that, that might be one of the reasons why we've gotten along and we've been together for as, as long as we have. Um, things that I like about, well, look, you know, I, I also, you have to understand this, as much as I am talking about defending Gen X to a degree, I wrote many novels criticizing us. I wrote many novels uh, criticizing a kind of shallowness to a degree, a kind of a consumerist uh, um, ideology. Um, there, there, is, there were definitely things about my generation that I wanted to explore that I was critical of. So it's not like Gen X is a big love fest for me. It just has become one increasingly comparing it to other generations. And so um, it's not, I, I don't want to say it's only like, oh, well, millennials are all this and they're all bad. That's not true because there's a lot of things about millennials that are legitimately interesting in terms of how they view the world. I think there is an emotionalism to them that doesn't interest me particularly, but I think there's certainly some great music. I certainly think that there are some really good filmmakers. I certainly think that there is uh, a, a, a certain kind of outlook that I might not agree with, but I completely understand given the circumstances of how they were raised and what they had to go through. So I am sympathetic to a lot of it. And I am critical of s certain aspects of Gen X. So I don't know. I think it's people in general, you know, that I have problems with. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it doesn't matter how old you are. I, I, I think you probably suck, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what it is. And, and that's got, and that, that, that's gotten um, uh, a lot worse as I've gotten older. Right. <laughs>